Welcome to Fingal Woods in the Teen Valley on the eastern side of Dartmoor. Fingal is a large scale woodland restoration project and it's around about 350 hectares and the larger proportion of it, as you can see across there, is the conifer plantation which is generally Douglas fir but there are other western hemlock Western red cedar, other timber species mixed in. And within this valley, there are some remnants of ancient woodland. And the restoration work is generally working to re redress that balance and bring back some more natural woodland. But within that, we're doing a lot of ecological monitoring and here's a project that we've started last year with the support of the People's Trust for Endangered Species and we're using these Dormouse footprint tunnels and here it's an area of regenerating woodland and so as you can see there's a distinct lack of trees on this side of the valley and the reason for that is that five years ago the Phytophthora remorum disease meant that this large stand of larch trees had to be felled. And it's around about 15 hectares across this side of the valley here. So what we have now is the remnant of what was standing beneath the larch and we've split this into three zones really so on the right there you can see a canopy of small oak coppice and that was what was hanging on beneath the, the larch and in the middle here you can see the tree planting tubes so this has been restocked with a mix of broadleaf trees because there was virtually no vegetation in this middle subcompartment here at the time five years ago. So the restocking was, was done to give this area a bit of a boost. And moving over to this side, there's a bit more small canopy trees, a bit more scrub, lots of bracken, bramble. So that's the third zone over there. And so throughout this area of the valley we're using 150 of these footprint tunnels to monitor how the dormice are recolonizing this part of the valley on this side of the hill. So down in the bottom over there we know there's a small population of dormice somewhat isolated surrounded by conifers but generally the habitat is a little bit cut off and then also on this other side of the valley across this way we know there's a good healthy population of dormice around some little patches little remnants and edges of some of the conifer plantation in amongst the little bits of hazel coppice and bits of broadleaf and along the ancient boundaries which are very important here um, it's really interesting so we've only done the first season of the, using these footprint tunnels to monitor this recolonization as the as the woodland regenerates itself as it reconnects but one of the things that we found in the last say few weeks is this area where it's fairly treeless but it's been very very busy lots of dormouse activity here and i'm beginning to think that some of these planted rowan trees whether i'm able to show you some of them down there there's already a good crop of berries on there, and there has been for the last couple of weeks. And it seems to be, whether it's coincidence, it seems to be attracting the dormice to this area. And from other areas as well, we've seen that they will tend to shift around a little bit to follow the food sources. And this is summer now, this is coming towards the end of July and we often notice the dormice when we're monitoring the boxes they disappear up into the trees and we don't see them very much for a while in the summer 
but here there aren't any trees for them to go into so it would be quite nice to think that this replanting, this restocking here with a bit of a focus on species like cherry, like rowan, those berry fruiting trees are actually proving to be quite successful. And as I look around here as well, we can see on the edge of the wood up there is an ancient boundary which again connects another little population of dormice that we know about across in that direction. So how do we get on with these footprint tunnels? Well, they're, they're very good actually. We've got 150 of them. So there's one. With the, the wooden insert and the paper on the tray there to catch the footprint. So you can see that patch of charcoal and oil mixture, which we replenish every couple of weeks and make sure it doesn't dry out. We did have a problem with being Dartmoor, there's a lot of rain over this side of the country so we did start to drill some holes in the bottom of these things to let the rain out, they were getting a bit soaking wet. But as I said they, they are quite successful so we can track quite accurately the movements of various different species so here's an example. I hope you can see that, that's the wood mouse which we get a few of, and this is a very nice one, an example of dormouse prints. Nice and clear that one, some of them are slightly fuzzy, very faint, but that's a lovely clear one there. Then over the next, say, four or five years we'll keep doing this, and as this habitat regenerates itself and connects itself back up we'll hopefully see a bit more activity down there where there's a shortage of cover and um, maybe a shortage of food as well but there are definite areas within this valley where the dormice don't seem to be um, don't seem to be moving around and so fingers crossed we'll get this woodland reconnected and restored and the dormice will be happy again. We'll just enjoy the Devon countryside for a minute. One more thing these footprint tunnels can tell us is about the other species that are around in the woods and as well as the dormice and the wood mice I have picked up some really tiny small mammal prints which could well be pygmy shrew. We won't know this sort of thing until I've sent some of these samples off to Imperial College in London where a researcher is working on an eDNA, environmental DNA project, so she will pick up the small fragments of DNA that are left in the environment and um, she will re return her results to me and I can compare those with my visual checks and um, this should provide us with some more interesting information. You can also see on the, on the top strip there that birds occasionally use these tunnels especially in the bad weather so we provide them with a sheltering service. So the whole project is a good partnership project. The woodland is owned and managed by jointly by the Woodland Trust, the National Trust and the People's Trust for Endangered Species are supporting this project and they put us in touch with Imperial College in London, so good teamwork. This PTES funded project is also working on and providing a bit of support for some management work. So this remnant of green woodland edge there is just enough for the dormice to occasionally be nesting up there. Then we move into this pretty dense conifer, this is all Douglas fir here, which has had a thinning recently and will undergo a bit more thinning just to gradually open it up. That's the general theory behind the restoration work, to improve that species mix in there, get a bit more ground flora growing and make these habitats a little bit more connected. Though the dormice do go through that canopy 
and we suspect that they probably move around quite a bit up there. There's various um, food sources up there for them. But ideally you want a little bit more diversity in that woodland structure. So moving over here, quite a quick transition into more of a broadleafed fragment of woodland here. And this again was overstood by the larch about five years ago. And the quality of the habitat is, is really improving quite rapidly here. And so we're just securing this bit of habitat really for these dormice and then expanding it out. There we go, there's a sign who's been nibbling that nut. So down here at the bottom of the hill, this is an interesting feature, we've got this strip of land here by the stream and it's scrubbing up and it's a thick patch of brambles, bits of bracken in there and some small trees coming up. It's a lovely dense patch of scrub and we're finding with the footprint tunnels that the dormice actually come through this almost periodically through the year and they pop up here in the spring when there are lots of bramble blossom and they seem to disappear for a while and then come back again in the autumn when there are lots of berries to feast on and it's all part of us understanding the landscape and being able to manage it in certain ways to improve it for the wildlife. Another interesting thing that we're finding with these tunnels is that as the dormice move around looking for food, seasonal adjustments and variations in the food, it seems that where there isn't tree cover well, you've got areas such as this that have been clear felled. All that fresh growth of birch is providing a food source. And where you have this sort of sappy, very young birch, aphids are there taking the sap from the trees and then these red wood ants are farming the aphids. And so they're encouraging the aphids to take the sap. The wood ants then take the honeydew from the aphids. But equally, all these aphids are very good food for dormice. And so we have a theory at the moment that this is one of the really useful food sources for the dormice. But maybe in a few years time, we'll be able to observe this a bit longer and maybe confirm that that's something that really is quite important for them. And so alongside the footprint tunnel monitoring, we've actually devised this, with the help of a few volunteers, we've devised this CCTV camera technology where we're filming inside these nest boxes. And we're getting some interesting footage about the behavior of the dormice. So I'll just have a quick look in this box and we'll see what's going on in there and then with this camera on the top there, which is connected to all the recording equipment, we can actually capture some of their movements. Okay, so there's a live dormouse in there. I can just see an eye poking up through a nest of loose leaves. So I'll leave that for the time being, and without disturbing them anymore, we can actually record some footage of what they're doing. I'm hoping that there's a, a mother and some young in there, so it's going to be interesting what we find out. And so with the camera connected up to the nest box, we follow the cable down and we find Tom here, who is our electronics expert. And he's going to show us what's in the box. So this is one of our recorder units. We've got three of these at the moment for the project. And we've got an outer box, which just keeps the worst of the weather off. 
and then inside we've got this little case. If I just open it up so you can have a look. Basically what we've got in here is a big battery which will run the recorder for about three days. We've got a little tiny recorder there that saves onto a memory card. And we've got a monitor that you can switch on and see what the camera's seeing. So if I just flick that on, it should wake up in a moment. There we go. And you're actually looking at the inside of the box there. So there's the hole on the right hand side there. And there's the top of the nest there. So obviously there's not much moving around at the moment. Most of the activity will be at night. So all I'm going to do now is take the memory card out, swap the battery for a fresh one, and we'll be able to take the card back, plug it into a computer and find out what's been happening. This old boundary line, this ancient hedgerow here, we've found is a good habitat for dormice. There seems to be a few using our footprint tunnels along here. And it's helpful to know that they're here and um, we can actually do some work on this habitat to make it a little bit better for them by, if you look through there, you can see plantation of Douglas fir. So our plan is just to gently keep knocking back that Douglas fir, opening up that piece of woodland there to broaden this bit of connective broadleaf habitat along this old boundary line here. And just enhance the habitat and expand it a little bit more. And as we walk down here, I'll just peer into where one of the footprint tunnels is hidden in here. And this one's particularly special because at this end of it, you'll see a CCTV camera. And this one has been quite a busy footprint tunnel over the summer. And we're hoping it stays that way so we get some footage of the dormice using this tunnel. And maybe we can find out a bit more about what they do while they're in there.